Hi, and welcome to Roleplay Roulette, where we take the bullets for you. Greetings, boils and ghouls. This time each year, we like to reach into our calciferous collection and pull out a real screamer. This is the month that should not be. A pestilent parade of devilish dicing, ghastly gaming, and eldritch arguing. Today we'll be digging into the dry and dusty ruins of prehistory with White Wolf Game Studios' newest product, Mummy, the Curse. The time has come. Once again, Sothis has entered her virgin cycle, and as such, you feel your leathery limbs stir from their ageless sleep. You arise from your tombs to find yourselves awake, and without immediate goal. Let's see your character, please. Hems kua em shanti alset, an shenatok shetem her saibut mit mitu. What? Anetra ifa em kefra, ren kemeth shet utep ami unut. What? Okay, wow, moving on to me. I'm a mess in Naboo of the Serpent's Decree. I specialize in damage absorption and transmutation. I want to put as much of my background as I can in your hands so that I learn more about it as my memory score increases. I'm called Nefer Setsu. Glad to hear you're getting into the spirit. Anet Hrak Shutha. Seriously, stop it. All right, what about you? Uh, yeah, he's a general king in the old country and now he's a vengeance spirit. It is real that the Empire fell and he's out to carve a new one before he pussies out and falls asleep again. Well, it's not really in the spirit of the game, but whatever. Do you have a name? Rambo Tep. Are you kidding me? Because that is f***ing stupid. Rambo Tep. Deal with it, Dice Munch. At least I ain't spouting poser talk like King Anubis sauce over here. Are shot to Neb! Are he shot in moot! Mummy is set in the world of darkness, which if you recall, we covered way back in our first video. However, don't think the background setting is the only thing you need to catch up on this. Mummy has a strongly distinct flavor that will make a huge difference to the history and psychology of each character. White Wolf's newest monsters are the Deathless, mummified relics from an empire long lost to time. The Arisen are favored servants of the Shan Yatu, an elite cast of necromancers and death priests who appeared mysteriously and forged a mighty empire before a man's history was written. The game introduces their strange gods, the 42 Judges of Duat, worshipped by the Empire until the Shanyatu fell. The men and women who became the Arisen, then, are those members of the common classes who pleased the Shanyatu due to their skills, abilities, or prowess. They were selected to become undying servants for all eternity, subjected to a great sorceress ritual that robbed their bodies of life but shackled their spirits for all time to the unknowable purposes of the Judges. The characters, then, are atavistic remnants of a long-dead empire. They exist when called from the underworld by their cultists or duties, or when the star Sothis begins its 1400-year cycle. Player characters will find themselves waking thanks to the alignment of the stars and signs. They will have no strict purpose save for that which they can find for themselves. Their quest will be to rediscover who they are, to regain their long, long memory and recall their own identity and become more than a tool for strange and forgotten gods. There have been several previous White Wolf publications that have dealt with the concept of the Egyptian mummy with varying degrees of success. This one, well, this one is the very first one to really try to give them an identity of their own. They inhabit the rich, excellently detailed setting of the world of darkness, though they seem engineered to remain in their own little corner of it, doing their own thing and not making too much of a fuss. I was initially displeased by the notion of each mummy being effectively a slave to some enigmatic demon god of the underworld for all eternity, but White Wolf's given me an out. The concept of apothesis, a form of mystical enlightenment that can eventually free an arisen from the burden of their judge's will, removes 90% of my initial misgivings. I'll give it a solid chamber. Now, Mummy is not one of those games that's gone a long way towards expanding the world of darkness. They do not operate in the afterlife very much, and their rarity makes their influence fairly contained. However, from the perspective of the character element, I feel that the curse brings a lot to the table. While mummies may not seem geared towards multi-monster campaigns, they are an interesting creature, and honestly, the first edition since Changeling that has really captured my interest. I'll give this section a chamber. Anyone who knows me off-screen know that Undead are my division, and nothing more so than mummies. When I heard White Wolf was redoing this game, I nearly combusted in my seat. I feel that this take on mummies is brilliant. It's unique, so different from what I'm used to seeing. Unlike Jay, I'm honestly very open to the idea of being a slave to a judge, 
mostly because of how strikingly different it is from other playable creatures in the world of darkness. There's so much you can do, and I love the concept of the storyteller making your history up as you go. It's mysterious and gives the player much to work toward. The world of Duat seems incredible, and I would love to play as a freshly dead undying working my way through the gauntlet. This is one of the few games that, given the story of the character, could be played solo with the storyteller, and that is incredible. The setting gets a chamber from me. informs you that the Winged Dragon of Ra was stolen by a group of Turkmen mercenaries. They can't track them, but they hope that your mystical senses can help recover it. Our arsena ant omnen un insami. Okay, that's it. Take one of your points out of fencing and move it into language. You now know Arabic and English in addition to the language of the nameless. Now knock it off! Ah, uh, don't tell me how to play my character. Nope. I'm drawing the line. You still get extra experience for your backstory and the effort. I bloody well hope so. I learned Pharaonic Egyptian for this role. That's impressive. For my role, I played the damn game. Now let's organize our resources. We know that the mercs have a specific symbol on their uniform, so... I'll Google it. What? I'll Google it. How? On my iPhone 5, with my limited data plan from Verizon. Biggest network in the world, bitch! I... Uh, shouldn't you not know how to do that? How does your mummy, who's been asleep for 500 years, know how to operate modern technology and have a phone contract? I learned it from my Millennium Rod or something. Now, weren't we supposed to find Sly for the Sky Dragon? Okay, okay, fine. If you shut up now, you can keep your stupid phone. But I mean right now. Do you have us hunting Yu-Gi-Oh cards? The Shawaka Center attacking. Roll for initiative. Whenever White Wolf adds a new creature type to their rogues gallery, they always dream up a new way for its powers to work. This helps give the creature its own identity. Mummy contains a number of interesting changes that make it stand out amongst the other denizens of the World of Darkness. To begin, mummies have two different power types, affinities and utterances. Affinities are fairly special in that they rarely have a cost. The mummy benefits from being able to use these powers whenever circumstances allow it. Utterances are tied to one of their mystic fuels, pillars, and tends to be inexpensive. This makes mummies honestly quite powerful, but unlike previous editions, nicely balanced with other types. The mummy's power attribute is called Sekhem and works very differently. It lacks an expendable resource mechanic and isn't raised by spending experience points. Rather, the mummy awakens with a rating of 10. This means that the Deathless rise in an unbelievably dangerous state of power, but they don't get to keep it for too long. Day to day, the mummy slowly loses points of Sekhem until eventually, they run out and fall again into the sleep of death. There is no hard or fast default for how Sekhem returns, relying instead on the style of game that the storyteller wants to run. The game's morality trait, a staple of all the World of Darkness titles, is called memory. Memory represents how much of the Orison's true self she's been able to recover, and thus how human her thoughts, feelings, and actions are. Unlike other traits, it is raised purely through experience and directly opposes the character's power attribute. Increasing memory means drops in Sekhem, so it is a balancing act between remaining strong and growing into your independence. In the World of Darkness, you usually start out fairly weak to average on the power scope, but in Mummy, you wake up ready to bust some f***ing heads. Instead of gaining power, you lose it depending on how quickly you expend it slash how long you're active. Often, the goal seems to be gaining a higher memory, at least if you want to get out from under the control of your judge. Affinities are incredible, with tiered effects that provide a static bonus at their basis level. Utterances are the bigger magics and are similar to the gift-based systems of other WAD games, but unlike those, you unlock higher tiers of your purchased powers as your pillars increase. I really, really like that, especially as someone who has a tendency to play casters. The Descent makes sure that, though you start out as a mighty undead beefcake, you quickly even out to be on par with the other creatures that WAD offers. While you're impossible to kill, and very flammable, you're balanced. It's... it's so unlike any other White Wolf game that it just boggles my mind. I'm absolutely smitten with it. It gets an easy chamber from me. Mummy uses the tried-and-true revised storyteller engine common to all the World of Darkness games. I've got no complaints there. Like each of the supernatural creature types, Arisen have their own mechanics and abilities to make them unique. Their powers are interesting and evocative, with plenty of quasi-Egyptian flavor and a flexible resource mechanic that makes them both powerful and adaptable. The system used for Sekhem is perfectly workable within the context of Mummy the Curse, but I could see it causing power imbalances in a mixed chronicle, since Arisen effectively begin at the apex of their power and fade as their descent continues, instead of the traditional start weak and get stronger dynamic that other characters use. As long as the storyteller is aware of this, though, and compensates for it, it shouldn't represent a game-breaker. 
I'll give the system a chamber as well. I personally love the new mechanics that separate mummies from the rest of the denizens. The descent, not to be confused with demons, is a very unique and interesting mechanic that actually lets you see what being a powerful monster is like without a ton of finagling or months of investiture. It forces a sense of urgency and judicious point use without being arbitrarily limiting. I'm impressed with the way that affinities and utterances work, and the powers not only feel different, but accomplish different effects for a change. That's a big deal for me. My only worry is the genital clinching power they start with, but that is only a concern of playing cross-campaign with other denizens. Either way, the system is unique without being unwieldy, Promethean, and special without being dick-punchingly broken, Demon the Fallen. I am genuinely impressed. A chamber is appropriate. The Shawanka Sen and her mercenary cultists are hanging back. Their bullets are dangerous to your servants, but harmless to you. However, their willingness to dig in becomes apparent when they are joined by two large Amkada. This sucks, I'm nearly useless. You're only dumping this stuff on me because you know I'm almost out power. Well, you wouldn't be if you weren't burning pillars like firewood, you knob. Deal with the consequences. Killer GM, killer GM. Shut up. I mean, you have the initiative. What do you do? I activate Blessed is the God King. In attack mode. Shut up. At the third tier, my form is a towering ebony-skinned minotaur snorting flames from her proud nostrils. You've activated my trap card. Shut up. I'll activate Blessed Flesh completely so that I gain the full armor bonus, draw my weapon. I spend two, shoot, and draw the power of raw tier three. I'll use my catapult turtle to launch my dragon champion at your- Shut up. One of the abominations bursts into flames and disappears forever. The other leaps onto Rambotep's back and strikes, dealing four lethal damage. I think that fills your track. Just spin the pillar to seal the flesh. I've got nothing left. Diggolo Crapavelli over there baited me to spinning it off buffing my stats so I could beat up that Home Depot earlier. No wonder the other customers in security tried helping that mouthy cashier. I told y'all she was setting us up. Killer GM! Well gosh, I guess you're just dead again. So what? I'll come back five more times. Fuck y'all, I ain't dying. Like any World of Darkness expansion, it has the benefit of being supported by White Wolf Game Studios. The book is well laid out, stylish, and quite durable. New supplements are coming out hard and fast, with seven new ones on the schedule, the first of which is already out as we speak. Forthcoming are two city books, a book detailing the guilds in greater depth, one about the true history of the deceived, one about the Sothic Turn, one about cults, one about the judges of Duat, and a manifesto ostensibly written by the heretic. That's a lot of support considering the previous games like Geist the Sin Eaters basically still have nothing. The support for this game is honestly incredible. They already have their first source book, a novel, and an active forum. That's really on par with Palladium's activity, and kudos to White Wolf for that. The book is beautiful, well-bound and sturdy, as is the norm for White Wolf books, and it's impeccably laid out. It's easy to navigate, and everything is well-organized. And the art is spectacular. I give the support a resounding chamber. I'm surprised at the level of support I'm already seeing for this game. Personally, I couldn't begin to care less about city-setting books, but I am interested in almost everything else. Given that the judges each only received a brief description in the core book, I'm looking forward to seeing more information on them. Seeing as how the characters are by default their servants, an understanding of what they are and what the hell they want can't help but be useful. What I really want to see, however, is more on the heretic. This probably isn't too surprising, since he or she is the first arisen to achieve apothesis. All in all, it looks as though White Wolf is really going all out with this one. Support gets a chamber as well, for another perfect three. Honestly? I'm surprised by how many supplements are already available. White Wolf is really putting a lot into this game, and it's been a long time since I've seen them do that. Several of their previous main lines have been buried and forgotten with next to nothing in the way of support almost immediately. Geist comes to mind as a game that really deserved better than it got. This earns an easy and unmitigated chamber. Mummy the Curse earns a perfect score for a solid company and receives our total recommendation. Wait, a perfect score in the month that should not be? That isn't like the stars aligning, is it? That isn't some sort of omen of ill portent, is it? Oh crap, do you hear that? Are, are we being taken to dark side? Awesome. Wait, wait, is that fog rolling in? Are we being raven gangs? Aww, Ravenloft. Ravenloft.